Good morning, everyone. It's been raining, which means her spring's filling up again. Still have lots of water in the tank. Yes, 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 yes. Manda from heaven. Uh, saw one today before I start this one. And thinking on what's coming next in Exodus. After Moses. We're just at where Moses is up right on the mountain. He's getting all the instructions and he's got the, the uh, tablets now. The Ten Commandments. The Ten Items properly translated. And I saw one this morning where, yeah, you know, <laughs> again, <laughs> it sounds like, right? Well, whatever is in the Bible, you just believe, right? And, okay, so what? I'm not allowed to question certain things or go, oh, okay, who wrote this down? Okay. I don't know. Were there any women writing things down? I have no idea. Men. Okay, men. Men men have their own agenda out there. Uh, just, that's just what it is. <laughs> Women too now, I'm sure. But the men. The men, right? Yes, it's always been the men somehow. That, and I'm good with that if they lead properly and are honest and truthful. And take care of things. And uh, anyway, you all know, huh? Moses is going to come down the mountain, and what happened? I don't know if we're there yet, but we're getting into that one. Hey. So I saw one. Oh, so, so with the uh, books uh, of the Unification Church, uh, Reverend Sun Myung Moon, you know, I all, and, and Hawk Jahan Moon now, the true parents, uh, well, things are written down, right? And then, of course, you just read it and you're going, well, okay, I guess that's that. You know, I'm taking that for what it is, right? Yeah, okay. And then, so there was one where it says, so what comes first, unity or harmony, right? And it says, well, it's harmony. And I'm reading the whole thing through and I'm going, that doesn't sound like harmony comes first. Sounds like to me, right? In order to, get, to create harmony, you have to unite first. Anything that creates or causes the cause and effect kind of thing, right? The cause is unity. The effect is harmony. That makes sense to me. And even through the whole thing that I'm reading through, it's not harmony. It's unity. You can unite. Enemies can unite under certain circumstances, right? And that create harmony. Yes. Right? So the cause is unity. The effect is harmony. That's what I see. That's what I got from it. I'm going, that's not harmony. Yes? Oh, well. Oh, but now you're talking against, yeah? I don't know if it's true father or true mother or both. Or whoever wrote it down. But to me, I'm looking at that. I'm going, ah. When I think on how A seed has to unite with the dirt in a way, right? And then unite with the sun and the and water, right? Yes, yeah. And then the harmony that is created through all the elements, this snap, grows a plant. Yes? The unity between a man and a woman creates what? A child. That's harmony right there within the child. Are both the mother and the father. Yes? I could go on and on and on with the examples. It's never harmony that comes first. So it's unity. Yes? Yes? Yeah, but you know, it's meant as harmony. There has to be love first, right? Between a man and a woman to create a child, really. <laughs> okay. No, there isn't. We have to prove out there. The proof is in the pudding. How many unwanted children are out there? All around the world. Abandoned. By their parents. <laughs> Just saying. Then the abandoned child. Gets united with someone that cares. And suddenly there's harmony in the child's life as well, isn't it? Okay, just saying. <laughs> People may see it again. So, yeah, but I still think I'll go with harmony first, then unite. You know? Okay. Yes, but that's how, how I see it. That's how I perceive it. Right away I went, wait a minute. 
Uh, I read the first question. What's first? Harmony, uh, un uh, to unite, uh, uniting or harmony? Yeah, I went to uniting. Wasn't even, then, oh, it's harmony. I'm going, what? Let me read through it. The word unite was always used before the word harmony as well in the whole text. Interesting. Well, I noticed that. Okay. <laughs> Ten yellow. I'm on a roll. Oh. When so many people are in the dumps out there, depressed, sick, I don't know what, one has to just, okay, you guys, you do that, and I understand to a point, that's just how it is. Right? Then there has to be a, a bit of a balance to it. I'm the balance to it all. And I hope that it goes out there, right, and infects you in a good way. Right? Yes? All right. All right. Who doesn't like to be inspired and, yeah, kind of be infected by positivity and and good energy, right? Yes? Yeah? That's a good thing to send out there. That's a good way to be. Yeah, and you think I'm just like this from the videos, right? No, I don't like this all day long. <laughs> all day long, of course sad times that I cry for, especially children out there starving, laying in the dirt. Who likes to be infected by depression or people who are just, eh? they're always trying, eh? words of comfort, eh? always words of comfort should come when someone's not feeling well with this or that, right? Yes, eh? the other way around, oh, I'm going to be affected now by, oh, bad mood, this or that, or, oh my gosh, you know, get sucked into wanting to re have revenge and hate and I don't know what, and then, right? Yeah, people do go more for that, don't they? It's interesting. Just like All right, we're in Exodus. <laughs> uh, section five, the golden calf. Well, here we go and the renewal of the covenant. Starts right out with it. Exodus 32, the golden calf. When the people saw that Moses was a long time before coming down the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said to him, Get to work, make us a god to go at our head. For that Moses, the man who brought us here from Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron replied, Strip off the gold rings in the ears of your wives and your sons and daughters and bring them to me. The people all stripped off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He received what they gave him, melted it down in a mold, and with it made the stat statue of a calf. Israel, the people, shouted, Here is your God who brought you here from Egypt. Observing this, Aaron built an altar before the statue and made this proclamation. Tomorrow will be a feast in Yahweh's honor. Early next morning, they sacrificed burnt offerings and brought communion sacrifices. The people then sat down to eat and drink and afterwards got up to amuse themselves. Huh. So, now the people don't know anything yet, right, of what God had, get, ha, had given Moses and all the things to do, right, to do exactly what they just did on their own, right? Create something. Right? But what did they create, right? Yes? A golden calf. Why a golden calf? Right? Yes? Huh? It's interesting on how, again then, what are all the different things that go with the, 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 the tabernacle and the ark? Right? Yes? Everything that goes with it. Yeah? What is all that? Right? Yes? Ah, now here is this golden calf. People couldn't wait. Right? Patiently wait. Wait for Moses to return. Well, we don't know what happened to him, so let's just do uh, create our own thing. Right? And Aaron, here's Aaron. Again, what was the mindset of the people? And when they're saying, oh, yeah, Yahweh, you know, now what? Yahweh, look, they're worshiping now a, 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 a golden calf, okay? A cow, a bull, right? 
That's what Yahweh looks like in their eyes. Wow. Well. Interesting. Right? But, again, yeah. so it seems like, you know, regardless, everything that God's trying to tell Moses on how to lead the people, guide the people with, with God's presence in mind as well, is necessary. Because so easily people derail. Takes no time at all. We know that he was up there for 40 days and 40 nights. That's a, what, a month and a half? Something like that? Not quite. All right then. Just interesting, right? Well, we have to remember again what was mentioned again. Brought them out of Egypt. What were they doing for 400 years? What were they made to do in a way as well? What did they agree to do as well? Right? Who were they worshipping there? Right. Yeah, it takes time to break away right, from all them false things, false teachings, false this and false that. Well, anyway. <laughs> Moses forewarned by Yahweh. Yahweh then said to Moses, go down at once, for your people whom you brought here from Egypt have become corrupt. Forty days, if that's all it took. Well, they were already complaining before, as I said. They have quickly left the way which I ordered them to follow. They have cast themselves a metal calf, worshipped it, and offered sacrifice to it, shouting, Israel, here is your God who brought you here from Egypt. Yahweh then said to Moses, I know these people. I know how obstinate they are, so leave me now so that my anger can blaze at them and I can put an end to them. I shall make a great nation out of you instead. <sighs> Sounds like God is not happy. So again, so here is Moses with God on the mountain and obviously, obviously there's some communication going on there, right? How did that exactly work? It's not like Moses was all that, okay, just saying. That's the thing. When you have certain gifts, and obviously Moses did, they are just there. Yes? And uh, maybe I shouldn't get into that one. This isn't about that. While we get our gifts, I may say that they can be used in the positive or the negative, right? In a constructive way or a destructive way. Just depends. The prayer of Moses. Moses tried to pacify Yahweh, his God. Yahweh, he said, why should your anger blaze at your people whom you have brought out of Egypt by your great power and mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say he brought them out with evil intention to slaughter them in the mountain mountains and wipe them off the face of the earth? Give up your burning wrath. Relent over this disaster intended for your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to whom you swore by your very self and make this promise. How did he know that? How did he know about all How did Moses know about all that? Then there has to be, again, there were already scrolls. They were in the hands of the Israelites. Someone kept them safe. Moses read all that. Oh, that's really interesting. How did he know that? Or... Were the conversations he had with God a lot longer than we are being given here? Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. I shall make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and his whole country of which I have spoken. I shall give to your descendants and it will be their heritage forever. Yahweh then relented over the disaster which he had intended to inflict on his people. Uh, again, nah, we already had that in Noah. He said he was never going to do that again. Something ain't right here, people. But I don't know. Well, as I said, who wrote this down? 
What for what for what purpose? I'm a parent. I went through plenty with my children. Yeah, they can make you upset. They really can. You know, and God, but it never came to my mind to say, well, I'm done, I'm going to put you down. <laughs> I never had that thought, no matter how things went. God would think that way. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Jesus said, the Father is in me, I am in the Father, and I am in you. So there's a part of God that resides within me, right? as well as my brother Jesus. So then if as a human being, I'm going, yeah, but I would never do that to my children. Regardless, it doesn't matter how mad I'm going to get. Right? Then you can't tell me that God actually had even just a thought of it. So again, where does this come from, you know? Yeah, just the, the fear of God, the wrath of God. We need to know the wrath of God at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's the same, you know, when, well, we, we all come from the ape. I'm going, yeah, well, we still have apes, you know. They, they, they didn't, uh, they didn't, uh, uh, how do you say, diminish or, or, no, they're still here. Apes are still here. Gorillas are still here. All kinds of other monkeys still here. And they're not changing anymore. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> if we really came from the ape, yeah, <laughs> that's one of our descendants. And yeah, well, how does that make sense? Yeah, why aren't they still becoming human beings? It just stopped somewhere? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense when it comes to science. But anyway... So there it is. So yeah, is it a is it is it a god of fear or is it a god of love? God of hate. I'm gonna get mad and when I have to have a human being, Moses, tell me, no, don't do that to your people. Come on now, we've come this far, right? Yeah. I can't see that. I can't see that. I can't see. No, 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 no. It's a God of love, always, 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 and foremost. What he can't change when it comes to certain things is because our freedom of will, our freedom of choice has never been taken away, ever. He can't interfere. Goes against one of the heaven, heavenly laws, too. Yep, yep. Moses breaks the tablets of the law. <clears throat> Moses turned and came down the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in hands, tablets inscribed on both sides, inscribed on the front and on the back. The tablets were the work of God, and the writing on them was God's writing engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moses, There is the sound of battle in the camp. But he replied, no song of victory is this sound, no lament for defeat this sound, but answering choruses I hear. Oh. And there, as he approached the camp, he saw the calf and the groups dancing. Moses blazed with anger. Wait, 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 wait a second. <clears throat> he already knew what was going on. God was so freaking mad, wasn't he? That he was ready to just, you know. And here he comes down the mountain, he's all surprised, and now he's blazing with anger? Well, what did he just do up on top of the mountain? Didn't he just tell God, just, you know, be, be kind, you know, just, just, let's, let's work this out, right? Yes, and here he comes down, he's blazing with anger now. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Wouldn't he already come down the mountain being prepared and what's going on and say, okay, i got to keep my calm, i got to do that, right? Yes, no? Okay. He threw down the tablets he was holding, shattering them at the foot of the mountain. He seized the calf they had made and burned it, grinding it into powder, which he scattered on the water and made the Israelites drink it. Ooh. <laughs> that reminds me, you know, the gold flecks that uh, comes in some kind of a liquor. I can't remember what it is. You know, people, it's kind of expensive and people really like to drink it. 
<laughs> I don't know. That just reminded me of that. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, Daniel. I can't help it. Moses then said to Aaron, What have these people done to you for you to have brought so great a sin on them? Aaron replied, My Lord should not be so angry. You yourself know what a bad state these people are in. They said to me, Make us a God to go at our head, for that Moses, the man who brought us here from Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. I then said to them, Anyone with gold, strip it off. They gave it to me, I threw it into the fire, and out came this cow. Interesting. He's asking Aaron, what the heck happened? You know, Aaron goes, well, also in a way that the, that he re replies in this exact same way on how the people says that man Moses. So wait a minute. Did Moses have a relationship with all them people? Probably not. But he should have a relationship with the ones closest to him who then would again go to the people, the leaders of all the tribes, this thing go, and they go, wait, 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 guys, 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 calm down. Right? Where was the leadership of each of the tribes? Not there. Wow, well, that, 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 that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Has it any of it changed? Interesting, just interesting. I'm telling you. <coughs> Unity before harmony. There we go again. They were not united with Moses. Not even Aaron. I don't know. Mobs. Mobs. Rioters. They can't be very frightful. So Aaron goes, Oh, I think I'm going to die here if I don't do what they want me to do. I gave him something to do. Bring me all your gold. Yep, that kept him busy. All right, all right. The zeal of the Levites, 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 Levi. Oh, interesting that the genes are named after a tribe from the Old Testament. <laughs> oh, could be a good thing. They're pretty good genes. My son just bought a, brought a, bought a pair and he says, they're going to last forever, Mom. Like you can wash them and this and that. I said, just don't put them in the dryer because that tears up fabric. He says, they're going to last for a long time. These are good jeans, Levi's. I'm going, yep, 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 yep. You got one of the tribes on your body. <laughs> when Moses saw that the people were out of hand, for Aaron had let them get out of hand to the derision of their enemies all around them, Moses then stood at the gate of the camp and shouted, Who is for Yahweh? To me. And all the Levites rallied round him. Oh. That's why they ended up getting the job of spiritualists in God's people. I see. He said to them, Yahweh, God of Israel, says this, Buckle on your sword, each of you, and go up and down the camp from gate to gate, every man of you slaughtering brother, friend, and neighbor. The Levites did as Moses said, and of the people, about 3,000 men perished that day. Whoa! Today, Moses said, you have consecrated yourself to Yahweh, one at the cost of his son, another of his brother, and so he bestows a blessing on you today. Wait a minute. What? Is this what anger does? That's what anger does, doesn't it? That's what anger does. Anger is really destructive. Did God ask him to do that? I doubt it. I remember. I remember the story of a uh, true father. He was in North Korea in a fertilizer camp. The uh, uh, life expectancy there was about six months. And 
he was there for three years, I think, almost. Two and a half to three years. Now, there's a reason why he survived. It is a big, long story. I'm not going to get into all of it. But he ended up making friends with the guards and this snap. And it would let in um, some of the uh, followers, right, of his. And they could bring him food, which, of course, he always shared. But he had some himself. Well, anyway, long story short, when... Uh, uh, the Russians and the Americans and whoever else came to liberate <coughs> the Koreans <coughs> in that camp, in that prison camp, they uh, started at the first cell and shoot all the prisoners. And they got all the way up to, he, true father was in the last cell. That's how the story goes. And they didn't get to him. And they got out. They didn't get to that last cell, a couple cells. I don't know how many there were left. But they started on the first one and didn't get to the last one. Or some, maybe some others. And there was a number of prisoners still alive. And they all got out, and here they are, surrounded by, you know, gunfire and whatever else, you know. And True Father told them all, it's just stand in the middle of the courtyard there, in the middle of the prison yard, he says, just stand around me. If you stand around me, nothing will happen to you. Right? Don't be afraid, just stand around me. So they did to begin with, but you know what? You're surrounded by, I don't know what, you get scared, you get Gosh, I had to be such a fright, right? Yes. And some ran off, you know, and sure enough got killed. Yep, even if it was friendly fire, so be it, you know. I mean, that must have been pretty chaotic. And everyone that stayed with him, stuck with him, didn't get hurt, including him. Yeah? Wow. Interesting. Well, anywho, here we are. Moses sends out the Levites. To kill what? Who? Why? How? Who did they choose to kill? I don't know. It was a long time ago. I don't know. It doesn't say. Moses was angry. He was really angry. He was so angry. According to this, 3,000 people died that day. Wow. Dude. Moses prays again. On the following day, Moses said to the people, You have committed a great sin, but now I shall go up to Yahweh. Perhaps I can secure expiation for your sin. Moses then went back to Yahweh and said, Oh, these people has committed a great sin by making themselves a god of gold. Again, too. Now here goes God up on the mountain and says, Hey, you know what? Just going to take care of them people. Done with it. Moses goes, No, no, no. You know, those are your people, you know. Hey, Moses' people as well, right? But then he comes down the mountain. What does he do? How does that make sense? Yes? The confusion that I see going on here now. It's just, it's like no one knows where their head is. It's like everybody got two heads. Don't know which one to follow. Right? Isn't that how often people, I must feel like that out there when I see and what goes on out in the world. Most people have two heads. Two heads. One day that one says whatever's going on. The other day that one says whatever's going on. Right? Not united. Huh? Physical body and spiritual body united. You have one head. That's it. And you'll know. Yes? Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. All the stuff going on here. And yet, if it pleased you to forgive their sin. See, now he goes and pleads for them again. But what did he just do? If not, please blot me out of the book you have written. Yahweh said to Moses, those who have sinned against me are the ones I shall blot out of my book. So now go and lead the people to the place I promised to you. My angel will indeed go to your head, but on the day of punishment I shall punish them for their sin. And Yahweh punished the people for having made the calf the one Aaron had made. But Aaron didn't die. 
Huh? Well, that doesn't make sense. So just what? The ones that were expendable? Oh, okay. As the Adam pool. This 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 doesn't make sense to me. Again, who wrote this? The Israelites ordered to depart. Yahweh then said to Moses, Leave, move on, leave, move on from here. Oh, wait a minute. That's that's 33. Oh, see, so interesting. I can't stop reading. <laughs> Conflict. Such a story, right? Yes. Hey. One hardly knows, yeah. What's heads and what's to what's toes? What 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 actually went on there? And what does the story again try to teach us? If I read out of that, if I had to make any kind of calculations, you wouldn't get a result, a proper one. Too many variables in there that don't compute either. Yes. So, is that, is that written the way it is written to confuse me? So I'm not going to use my heart to mind. Go, wait a second, wait a second. Wait, let me, let me, uh, let me make this calculation here. How does this, how would this work in a math problem? Or, you know, if, if I'd had to go, now who's telling the truth? What's made up? What's added to it? What's left out? Too much. Of all of it. Not enough. Of all of it. All right? I think that in the uh, New Testament, that that's the reason why Jesus tried to teach us, right? tried to give us and teach us on how to connect to our Father in heaven. Nobody's calling Yahweh, God, Father, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Parent in the Old Testament. All right? Not a close enough connection. The, relation, the relationship's not intimate enough right, to even be friends. So, interesting. To see the fickle, how fickle people, even yeah, in the Old Testament, how fickle they were. With all the work they had to do. Remember, they didn't have stores to go to and buy the food or right? all kinds of other things. You know, that give us all this time to do whatever we're doing out there that's so unnecessary, right? Because we have the time to do it all. I often forget what actually really matters and not, not even do the most simplest work out there, really truly necessary. Right? Well, anyway, when I think on how certain places look like in the world, right? I could name all kinds of them. There's no need for that, including here in the United States. And people go, film crews go, and they, they, uh, uh, you know, make a little documentary of something. I don't know what. And I'm looking. And, oh, that those are really poor people. They have a lot of garbage laying all over the place. I'm thinking. It doesn't matter how poor or rich you are. You can't pick up your own garbage. You can live in really humble circumstances and it can still look nice, cleaned up. Not possible. Mm. Just saying. Yeah? Well, then it doesn't look bad enough right? for you to what? Get all riled up again? Okay. Just saying. People make choices out there. One of them is to live in filth. That's 
the truth. Adults, children, you can't lay that burden on children. Not right either, right? But I've seen children taking care of children live in a cleaner environment. Taking care of it themselves and adults. That's that's sad, isn't it? Well, anywho, had to mention that. Right, guys? They already had the run. And they came home all wet. And they're knocked out. I'm going to go in the kitchen and start getting their food ready. <laughs> They'll all wake up. All right. It's a nice day here. Looks like the rain stopped. Uh, I didn't make a fire today. It's about 40 degrees out there now. It's 50 degrees, 50, 55 in the house, just right. Save the wood, right? Yes, no need to waste, even if I have plenty of it. All right, that's it. That's all I wanted to share this morning. God's love and blessings always. May he protect you. I will talk to you another time.